It's Friday night, Atlanta. Time to rise up tonight with Kelly Price and Harry Douglas. Presented by AT&T. Atlanta! We made it to 2022. Well, almost 24 hours from now, we'll be ringing in the new year, which is insane. I'm Kelly Price and filling in for Harry Douglas this week. I'm really excited to welcome my girl Tori McElhaney of AtlantaFalcons.com. Welcome to Rise Up Tonight. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. It's a very exciting time as the Falcons, of course, prepare for the Bills this weekend. They came away with their first win at Mercedes-Benz Stadium last Sunday. They're now 7-2 and two in one possession games. That means executing at the right times, calling the right plays, and of course, a little luck. But as I like to say, success is where luck meets opportunity. And this is a huge area of improvement from last season and a big step in the right direction under Arthur Smith's first year, right? You're exactly right because the Falcons were 2-8 and eight in 2020 in one possession games. That's a huge difference from the 7-2 and two record that they have right now. So that in and of itself just kind of shows a culture change. It shows that Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot are leading this team in a different direction. And the steps in the right direction. A big reason they were able to come away with that dub last Sunday, a guy named Foye Aluakon, which broadcasters keep finding new pronunciations <laughs> for somehow. His interception iced the game for the Falcons, and it was an exclamation point on what's been a very good season for the NFL's second leading tackler. Tori, you had a great deep dive on how the Falcons kind of discovered this, this, this diamond in the rough, a sixth rounder in 2018, draft out of Yale. What's gone into them finding him and him having a great season? I love Boye's story, and, I, and I've loved his story from the get-go. It, it's really interesting because I, just from talking to people when I was doing this story, they were saying we didn't expect when we drafted Boye in, with the 200th pick in the 2018 draft for him to be what he is. We thought we were getting a special teams player, a guy with good character, maybe adding a little bit of depth. We did not think we were going to get the number two leading tackler in 2021. I, I just think that's amazing when you think about the over arc of his entire story. And that's exactly where they've ended up. Fast forward to this week, the Falcons have had a number of players go on to the COVID reserve list. The good news is, as you pointed out on AtlantaFalcons.com, that the team is fully vaccinated and they may escape some of the strictest protocol consequences because of that. How can they manage the COVID losses in Buffalo on Sunday? I think it's really important when we were talking to Arthur Smith this week, he was talking about how essentially he feels optimistic about where the Falcons are just because they are fully vaccinated. They are kind of able to go through the protocols a lot easier. So he feels optimistic that the Falcons are going to get some guys back before they play the Bills on Sunday. And they're certainly going to need that. Well, the two ladies on the set love two things, sports and playing dress up. If you can't tell what the New Year's Eve fits, let's check out some of the best Falcons fits from last Sunday. Although the peach drop was canceled again to, due to COVID-19 concerns, Quadre Allison giving us some peachy vibes on Sunday with the sweater. I'm here for it. Even the, the peach Nikes on the bottom. I mean, that's a great look. I honestly think that I need to incorporate more peach get up in my own everyday outfit <laughs> because I love it. As a Georgia peach myself, I just feel the need to represent the state more and, and Quadre is really killing it. I yeah. like it. He always does a good job with his outfits too. Now I know you're going to like this as a Georgia gal. Of course, former dog Sean Williams looking sharp in the Letterman style jacket coordinating with the red and black Nikes. I love the ripped jeans and the hoodie modernizing the look, but he's also got a scary game face on in this picture too. <laughs> I love it and, and I'm glad that you brought up the dogs because honestly this jacket is amazing. I, I talk about how I need to add more peach. I need to add this jacket to my wardrobe too. Yeah, you got to contact him find out where he got that. <laughs> now for Keith Smith, who's always good for a fashion statement. It's not exactly my vibe, but he definitely rocks with his own style, which I respect. Lots of headbands, lots of denim for Keith Smith. And this jean jacket is, I'm sure, by some designer that's like above my tax right. bracket. But who am I to judge? Yeah, honestly, I love the whole denim on denim get up. I, I'm a 90s baby. I think we both are 90s babies. Yes. So the fact that the denim on denim look is coming back. It just makes me feel better about the number of <laughs> denim jackets that I have in my closet right now that it's coming back so I have an excuse to wear all this. Pull stuff. those out of the attic. It's coming back. Finally, a twinning moment. It doesn't appear to me these two linebackers coordinated their looks, but I would have loved to see the reactions when they both walk into the locker room. They're wearing the same thing. I think it's also a Christmas sweater homage, right, which yeah, I love. Yeah. No, I love it too. And it's so funny because you know that meme, it's the Spider-Man meme where they're like pointing at one another. <laughs> just like, I just imagine them walking into the locker room being like, <laughs> Hey man, we're wearing um, the same thing. We're both wearing the same thing. <laughs> but then at the exact same time, knowing Michael and knowing Foyer, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if, if they planned this, <laughs> that this was a, an, an executed thought that they had. <laughs> we love it. Well, 2022 is just 24 hours away now, so y'all better start working on those New Year's resolutions. At least some of the Falcons have figured theirs out, as we found out when we asked them what their New Year's resolutions were this week in tonight's question of the week.
can't tell that. <laughs> but you have one? Yes. Okay. I don't have one. <laughs> Not right now. I'd rather not stay. I'd rather not stay out here on camera. Maybe uh, just stay healthy, you know, play the whole season, uh, don't get injured kind of thing. Well, probably read some more. I feel like I, I need to do some more reading. So probably read some more, yeah. Good health, always a good thing to resolve in the new year. There's even some more guys that didn't want to divulge their New Year's resolutions. It really makes you wonder what they're resolving over there in Flowery Branch. As for me, I think my New Year's resolution is to eat better. The holidays kind of always put me in this weird funk where I'm just kind of like eating a lot of sweets, eating not so great. Got to get back on that meal prep game. What about you, Tori? Okay, it sounds generic. It sounds basic. But honestly, I need to get back in the gym. During football season, I do not take care of myself and I will own up to <laughs> not taking care of myself. So I've got to get back in the gym. It's more of a postseason resolution than it is actually go. a uh, New Year's Eve resolution. Yeah, because we still have a few couple weeks here after the new year, the Falcons are still playing. So, and we'll <laughs> see what happens with the playoffs too. Still a couple weeks there. New Year's resolutions though, still to come. Still to come here on Rise Up tonight, Atlanta's own Master Chef slash Iron Chef, Justin Robinson stops by the show. You won't want to miss that, that one. It's one of my favorite interviews of Dental season long. It's coming up later in the show. What's up, ATL? This is Ted Crack. Let's rejoin my favorite co-hosts, Kelly and Harry, for more Rise Up tonight on your home for Falcons football. Fox 5 Atlanta. Well, in the last couple games, the Falcons run game has seemed to disappear again. Getting that jump started in Buffalo is just as important as containing that guy on the other side, Josh Allen. Falcons insider Dave Archer explains more in his keys to the game. Falcons head back out on the road. This time they go to Buffalo where they'll take on the Bills and maybe some weather. Let's look at the keys to the game. This Falcon offense got some things going last week. One of them was not the run game, and that's where the key is here. This is a Buffalo defense that's number one in the National Football League, but they've struggled against the run, giving up almost 120 yards a game. In fact, over the last four games, they've given up over 130 yards per game in their last four. Must get the run game going, keep their offense on the sideline, but move some clock, score that way. Must take care of the football as well. This is one of the best defenses in taking the football away. They're number three in the league with 29 takeaways, and they are number three in the league in interceptions. So Matt Ryan going to be very guarded about where he throws the football. Take care of the ball, run the ball on offense. On the other side of the ball, I think it all comes down to the quarterback. Uh, Josh Allen is a guy that can hurt you both throwing it and running. He's got over 600 yards rushing and four touchdowns. you got to take away the impromptu play. He has the ability to create and extend plays. Must keep him wrangled in. Make him throw the ball from the pocket. He's dangerous enough from there. But don't let him get out and extend plays and hurt you running with the football. There's your keys to the game. And Atlanta goes up and battles the weather potentially to get a W in Buffalo. Thanks, Arch. Well, the Atlanta Falcons were still in the Christmas spirit as one of their top dogs gave back earlier this week. More on that coming up later in the show. Plus, hope you're not hungry. We've got Atlanta chef J-Rob in the nest. He's going to talk a lot of great things about food next up on Rice Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing, and by Truist, committed to a better future. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight, and it's time to hop into the nest with Kelly, Harry, and tonight's influencer, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Really excited to welcome in the nest a different kind of, kind of guest than we've had before. A chef, Chef J Rob uh, from Atlanta is here. You might know him from Master Chef. Something we haven't really talked about on this show in this segment is Atlanta's culture in the lens of food. We talk about it in music and all these other ways, but food is also such a big part of Atlanta's culture. How do you describe it, Justin, to you know people who've never been to Atlanta or don't know about Atlanta? It's like the new food mecca, honestly. Like food in Atlanta, there's so many different cultures, so many different varietals of cuisine that you can indulge in. And I'm trying to make a mark for myself right now. So 
honestly, if I'm not cooking, you know, for myself, there's so many different options to just go out and just get full. <laughs> so I have a two part question. Your favorite food to cook and your favorite food to eat. Because they're Ooh. probably two different things, right? Yeah, yeah, it's two different things. So my favorite food to cook, I would say, is lamb. You can never go wrong with cooking a nice rack of lamb. I usually take like a pesto uh, jerk rub mm -hmm. marinade, which is so unconventional. But when you marry those two flavors, and you it's, it's so good. It's so good. And um, my favorite food to cook. I, wait, was that? I don't. I do like lamb for both, but um, <laughs> I love uh, cooking uh, uh, brisket. You can't go just the process. It's like nurturing a kid to me. Like, I don't have any kids, but I feel like <laughs> you have to wake up every three hours to spritz it, make sure that, you know, it's slow and slow. So uh, brisket and lamb would be my top two. So I was reading on your website, you list NFL players as some of your clients as well. What's it like working with that group of people versus just, you know, kind of everyday people? Yeah, so I honestly just where I'm from. I'm from Mobile, Alabama, so uh, really humble upbringing, really wasn't around celebrities. So coming to Atlanta and being introduced to a whole celebrity market was just like, wow, like who would have thought I've been cooking for this person, you know? And I just treat everybody the same. I could care less if you have a million dollars or $10. As long as you're booking my services, I'm giving my all and my energy to every single person. But uh, cooking for the people you see on TV or here on the radio or you know host you know you know miss universe and stuff like that it's just crazy and just to be put in those rooms is really gratifying too uh but it's definitely a a, a different scene for sure i don't know if you have any falcons as clients but i do know you are a falcons fan i want to talk about maybe some of your favorite memories watching this team yeah, so honestly, you know, growing up, you know, again, Alabama doesn't have a football team. The closest place was, you know, the Atlanta Falcons. And, um, you know, my aunt and uncle, they uh, were originally uh, moved out here a while ago and uh, when they came from the hurricane. And just coming to visit and, you know, watch the, the Falcons on TV, it was just, just an atmosphere like I've never witnessed. And then now that I'm here, got the new stadium, you know, I just really want to be a part of the Falcons culture. Like, I would love to do, like, tailgates outside. Like, there's so many ways that I want to get involved. So, hopefully, you know, you see Chef J-Rob tailgating right outside Mercedes Stadium soon. Watching this team now, who are some of your favorite players? I would honestly say, you know, it's, I hate to see Julio go. It, you know, it, it, it was – it was that, was that was my favorite player. Um, you know, I want to see Matt Ryan step up a little bit, you know, just being, you know, transparent. Um, you know, I, I'm really, to be honest with you, just fully transparent. I haven't got much time to watch it this season just because I'm so busy. But uh, when I do get a chance to watch it, um, I want to say it's upsetting, but I just definitely want to see the culture just turn around. We had such a great baseball season. I'm a huge Braves fan, so um, I played baseball in high school. So that's primarily where my heart is, but I definitely want to see the Falcons really have a great season next season. Your New Year's Eve plans, do you have any? And what do you kind of suggest for people who are maybe thinking of hosting a New Year's Eve get together? Yeah, so um, I'm rocking and rolling, um, masked up, and I have uh, five bookings right now. So wow, <laughs> it's going to be a busy day. But um, getting it all in before midnight, so I can spend you know the rest of time with my fiance. Um, and really bring in the new year and reflect on our goals. And, um, you know, we're getting married next year, so it's really exciting and the things that we want to accomplish. So we're looking forward to it. And everybody who's celebrating New Year's Eve, just be very aware of your surroundings. Um, you know, we're in a time where, you know, it's, it's an adjustment to your environment. So you just want to make sure that you take the proper precautions, but also have fun, you know. Uh, life is short and you always want to live it to the fullest and uh, fulfill every moment. Congratulations on your engagement. That's super exciting to have something to look forward to in 2022. Um, when you think of just like your average cook or even if a celebrity chef or anything, what is one thing that you wish every person knew about cooking for it to become a passion and for it to become something that they like to do? I would say season, light to dark. <laughs> World of a difference. If you can see the season hit the protein or the vegetable, um, you know, that's why I always preach light to dark, light to dark. Um, I talk a lot about 
flavor profiles in my cookbook too where you can use different herbs and uh, fruits to kind of elevate the flavors of a dish so there's so many different ways that you can go about it but seasoning light to dark makes the world of a difference that is so exciting thank you so much for spending some time with us here on rise up tonight anyone wants to see the full conversation and see more head to fox5atlanta.com and we'll be right back thanks kelly Hey Atlanta, this is Head Crack talking, and you watching Rise Up Tonight, presented by AT&T. Hey Crack here, Rise Up Tonight has been presented to you by AT&T. Though the Christmas rush is through, the holiday season is still upon us, and Falcons president and CEO Rich McKay celebrated the giving season with a very merry McKay Christmas as we rise up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. McKay and his wife Terry hosted 17 underprivileged football players from Banneker, Chambly, Flowery Branch, and Noonan High Schools for Sunday's game against Detroit. The boys enjoyed a game in a luxurious box suite and were surprised with Falcon swag, shoes, gift cards, and more. Alongside Freddie Falcon, they took in Atlanta's first win at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in 2021, which was a nice bow on top. Speaking of Christmas presents, you may have seen the video earlier this week of Matt Ryan's son with the coach's headset he got for Christmas, which was adorable. I had a chance to catch up with the quarterback about the ice cubes earlier this week. Take a listen. Matt, finish your head. Trips right. Trips right. Three jet. Three jet. Let's go stow. Oh. X go. X. Check hinge. Hatch it. Check it if it's uh, soft and off. Okay. Off and off. Hide out. Oh, time out. How was Christmas? I saw there was a uh, headset under the tree for one of your sons. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a great Christmas and uh, a lot of fun to, to be able to see it through your kids' eyes. Uh, and our guys had a really good time. And yeah, the headset was was one of the big big presents for my son Marshall. Uh, he'd been talking about it nonstop, and so he's been wearing that thing around the house, calling plays uh, for the last couple of days, which has been a lot of fun. Did they both get one or just the one? No, no, they both got one, but my other son Johnny could care less about it. He's in <laughs> trains and uh, some of the other things we have rolling around the house. I wish I could get inside, you know, his head to, to kind of, you know, see what he's thinking, but uh, he. He definitely plays the part. You know, he walks around, you know, with, with his little chest pumped out and, uh, you know, is is uh, feeling like he's the head coach, which is cool to see. What's it like to, as they kind of get older, to share football with them in a more meaningful way? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun, you know, uh, just, you know, listening to, to them talk about the games when I come home from them or uh, just talking about who we're playing that week and, you know, they get fired up about beating the Buffalo Bills and you know, Carolina Pan, whatever it is. You know they're they're fired up for each week, and uh, you know so it's cool. It's cool to see that, and then it's cool to see them. You know running around the house, throwing the football, catching the football, having fun with it, and um, just you know it takes you back to when you fell in love with the game, and um, to see it through their eyes is really special. I absolutely live for Sarah Ryan's videos of the Ice Cubes. They are fantastic. Well, the Falcons haven't still beat a good football team with a winning record, and now they head to Chili Buffalo, where the Bills are 9-6 and six and coming off a win against the Pats. Falcons have been great on the road, but in their eight losses this season, they've been outscored 262-107, to 107, Tori. How do they at least keep it close and competitive? I think it's really important to talk about the Bills' defense being the number one pass defense in the league right now. That is a big test for this Falcons offense and, and I think it goes back to what Cordero Patterson was talking to us about earlier in the week where he was talking about the run game establishing itself early making sure that they are pretty balanced offensively because that'll help out the pass game it'll help out this offense really moving forward down through four quarters because like what we said they haven't played a complete game yet and they've been close they've had their moments but not a full four quarters and I think that's going to be Essentially, the biggest key to this game, I know, I know Arch talked a little bit about it, but also that's just what needs to happen in yeah. order to beat a Buffalo team that's playing pretty well right now. Absolutely. Josh Allen playing well as well. A different kind of dual threat quarterback than they've kind of seen this season. Um, so we'll see how it goes on Sunday. Thank you all for staying up late with us here on Rise Up Tonight. Shout out to Tori McElhaney for joining us. We'll see you next Friday night. Happy New Year.